In this video, you'll learn the proper way to administer oxygen, clear an obstructed airway, use sample and your initial assessment of a victim, use an AED alongside CPR, and the proper way to remove your gloves. First, we're going to talk about oxygen setup and administration. You need to select the desired cylinder, check to make sure it is labeled oxygen, possibly a green label with a yellow diamond, all of which are 2000 PSI. Place the cylinder in an upright position and stand to one side. Remove the plastic wrapper or cap protecting the cylinder outlet. Make sure to keep the plastic washer. Crack the main valve for one second to clear the dust and debris. Select the correct pressure regulator and flow meter. Place the cylinder valve gasket on the regulator oxygen point. Be sure that the pressure regulator is closed. Align the three prongs and then tighten the T-screw to hold firm. Attach the proper tubing and delivery device. In this case, we're using the nasal cannula. While you're doing this, make sure to explain to the patient that they need oxygen. Open the main valve and then adjust the flow meter. Then you're going to place the nasal cannula or any other oxygen delivery device on the patient. In this case, you put, paste, place the no, nose stems in the nose and wrap the tubing over the top of the ears and around to the back of the neck. Adjust the flow meter and do all you can to keep the patient calm. Here's an overview of the different devices used for oxygen administration. First is the resuscitation mask with 6 to 15 liters per minute and a 35 to 55% oxygen rate. Next is the non rebreather mask with 10 to 15 liters per minute and a 90 plus percent of oxygen intake. And last is the bag valve mask with 15 plus liters per minute and 90% oxygen. We're going to Demonstrate how to clear an obstructed airway in a conscious adult. If you come upon a conscious choking adult, these are the steps you must take. First, look for the universal signs of choking, both hands crossed over throat. Determine if the patient can speak by asking, are you choking? If they cannot, perform the Heimlich maneuver. Place your dominant fist on the belly button, then roll the fist once towards the chest. Place the second hand over this fist and perform a J-stroke upwards into the patient's diaphragm. Give five thrusts, then follow that with five back blows. Continue until object is dislodged or patient becomes unconscious. Now we'll explain what to do if your choking victim is unconscious. If you come upon an unconscious adult that is not breathing, follow these steps. First, tilt the head back and push the jaw forward to open the airway. Then give two breaths. If the patient has an obstructed airway, these breaths will not go in. Retilt to ensure you did not make the mistake. Then give two more breaths. These will not go in either. Now perform 30 chest compressions. Place dominant hand in the center of the chest along the nipple line. Lace fingers of the second hand with dominant hand forming a fist. Compress two inches letting the chest recoil completely. Compression should be at the rate of 100 compressions per minute. After compressions, check the mouth to see if an ob the object was expelled from the airway. If any object is visible, give a finger sweep to remove it. Take your finger and give a J-hook from corner of the mouth to the other. Now open the airway and give two more breaths. If the breath go in, you have successfully dislodged the obstruction. If not, repeat these steps without the retail retract. If your patient is an infant and is conscious, let the infant attempt to expel the object by coughing. If they cannot, 
Hold the infant in a stable position. Hold the infant's head in your hand while you lay them on your forearm, face down with the legs straddling your bicep. Be sure not to cover the mouth. Deliver five back blows between the shoulder blades using the heel of your hand. If the object is not expelled, turn the infant's face up with the head lower than the rest of the body. Deliver five chest thrusts. Place your middle finger and ring finger, or whichever fingers are closest in length, in the center of the chest along the nipple line. If the object is still not expelled, continue alternative back blows and chest thrusts until it is. Now, if your infant is unconscious, then place the infant on the ground on its back with its head in a neutral position. Open the airway and give two breaths. Note that these are shallower than breaths that would be given to an adult victim. If breaths do not go in, reposition the head and try again. If the breaths do still not go in, perform 30 chest compressions using your index and ring finger. After 30 chest compressions, look for the object in the mouth. If you see the object, perform a pinky sweep in the same fashion as the adult finger sweep, just with your pinky. If you do not see an object, repeat steps starting with chest compressions. Now we're going to cover sample, one of the first steps in a first responder's action plan, designed to give them a background on the victim. S stands for the signs and symptoms of the victim you're assisting. A stands for allergies. M stands for medications that they may be taking. P stands for pertinent past medical history. L stands for last oral intake. E stands for events leading up to the incident. The first responder to the scene begins CPR while the second responder prepares the AED. Proper use of the automated external defibrillator device in conjunction with CPR increases a patient's chance of survival by 40%. When the second responder arrives with the AED, they place the pads on the upper right pec and lower left ribs, working around the first responder who is performing CPR. After placing the pads, you plug the cord attached to the pads into the AED machine. Then you turn on the AED. The AED will tell you when to step away from the patient so that it can analyze the heart rhythm. Next, the AED will tell you when a shock is advised. Never touch the patient during a shock. To administer the shock, you press the shock button. Now listen to the AED as it tells you to perform CPR for two more minutes. The AED is designed to walk a first responder step by step through the process of administering shock and administering CPR. The last thing we're going to cover is proper glove removal. Using the non-dominant hand, remove the opposite glove until just the fingers remain covered, turning the glove inside out as you do so. Make sure to leave the thumb covered as well. Taking the partially covered hand, grab onto the bottom of the fully covered hand. Begin to remove this glove while turning it inside out. Then turning the first glove into a bag, discard the gloves in an appropriate receptacle. Thank you for watching our video and we hope you learned something new.